from the Tribune News Network. This is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has told Americans to avoid travel to the Bahamas, citing a very high level of COVID-19 in the country. Yesterday, the United States' chief public health agency increased the country's health notice from level 3 to level 4. The nation had remained at level 3 since late January, after previously being listed at a level 4 by the CDC last year due to virus infections. Travelers should avoid all travel to the Bahamas, the CDC advisory read. Because of the current situation in the Bahamas, even fully vaccinated travelers may be at risk for getting and spreading COVID-19 and should avoid all travel to the Bahamas. According to international media reports, the U.S. State Department said yesterday it planned to boost its do-not-travel guidance to about 80 percent of countries worldwide, citing unprecedented risk to travelers from the COVID-19 pandemic. Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd said he has no concern at all that an outbreak will occur at schools open to -to face-to-face learning, despite a health official believing the country is experiencing a third wave. Dr. Nakia Forbes, director of the National HIV AIDS and Infectious Disease Program at the Ministry of Health, confirmed to the Tribune the climbing COVID-19 numbers and hospital cases show the country is now in the early stages of a third wave. Mr. Lloyd's comments came yesterday when Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson said there were positive cases at several public schools. It was claimed that the majority of the cases are students. While asked by reporters if there were any concerns of an outbreak occurring at schools with face-to-face learning, the minister answered, quote, no, I have no concern at all because we're doing what the health officials have asked us to do, and that is to maintain all the protocols that we are required to maintain, social distance, wash your hands, wear your masks, and so on. That is the issue of personal responsibility. The attorney representing one of the victims of an alleged police brutality incident captured on audio fears the Royal Bahamas Police Force will not bring disciplinary action against the accused senior officer involved in that matter. It has been reported by a local media outlet that the assistant superintendent in question has retired from the force with full pension, with effect from March 31 this year. Commissioner of Police Paul Roll declined to confirm this yesterday, saying he could not discuss disciplinary matters in the media as the case is sub judice. Yesterday, attorney Craig Butler told the Tribune he had no idea that this man was retiring and or close to retiring. Mr. Butler further revealed he had not spoken to his client as yet, but was almost certain he is going to be upset as the matter is still unresolved. Jitney drivers on the number 15 route yesterday trialed a new system to see if it produces a better share of passenger fares said to still be down 70 percent compared to pre-COVID-19 levels. Harrison Moxie, the United Public Transportation Company's president, told the Tribune the rest of the industry is watching with interest the results of this week's experiment that saw drivers line their vehicles up on the field outside Super Value's Winton store from early morning. He explained that the idea was for Jitneys to depart every 10 minutes on the route, which takes passengers the length of Prince Charles Drive to the mall at Marathon and back, in a bid to ensure all drivers picked up at least some fares, while avoiding the common practice of racing each other between stops. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, President Joe Biden said today he was praying the verdicts is the right verdict in the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. He said he believed the case, which has gone to the jury and put the nation on edge, was overwhelming. Biden told reporters he was only weighing in on the trial into the death of George Floyd, who died with Chauvin's knee on his neck because the jury in the case had been sequestered. Westerd. President Idris Deby Itno, who ruled Chad for more than 30 years and became an important ally to the Western nations in the fight against Islamic extremism in Africa, has been killed while battling against rebels in the north. He was 68 years old. The news of his death announced today by the military came hours after he had been declared the winner of an election that would have given him another six years in power. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A quasi-stationary front stretched across the extreme northern islands will generate unsettled weather through tonight, while high pressure will keep stable conditions across the remainder of the Bahamas. Residents should be aware of the presence of Saharan dust particles in the air across the area that may reduce visibility, especially for mariners. Also, caution should be exercised by boaters as the threat of water spot activity is heightened as a result of the frontal 
boundary. For the northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy and hot, with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms, mainly in the extreme northern islands. These showers may become heavy and thunderstorms strong to severe at times. Small craft should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds south-southeast to south-southwest at 10 to 15 knots. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. For the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be mostly sunny and warm, with a slight chance of a shower becoming fair and warm tonight. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 91 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 77. The sun will set this afternoon at 733 and will rise tomorrow morning at 642. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets. Or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.